really shallots are great if you don't have enough onions and you happen to have a shallot which god i don't know when that would ever happen except for maybe in sous chef's home Well, sous chef really does have a really great intro. I know about you guys, but every time I hear that, dun, 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 it just makes me want to do a little jig. Um, and I know a lot of you guys are sitting out there probably like, oh my gosh, who is this lady sitting on sous chef's channel? Well, hello. <laughs> My name is Sally. I'm sous chef's cousin from across the pond. At least that's what I think Americans say, right? Like anything that's not in America and across the Atlantic Ocean, they call that the big pond, right? I don't come to America often because, hello, I live in London. I live in England. Why would I come to America? Except for one really great reason, and that's because I have this wonderful cousin who everybody says that we're absolute doppelgangers, right? So she's a wonderful cousin of mine. You guys all know her as the sous chef. She's my first cousin. We look really, really similar. I know it's absolutely mind boggling. We're not sisters, we're not twins, we are cousins. Uh, the one way that you can tell the difference between her and I is that, hello, I've got shades on. She doesn't wear shades. I think she got that LASIK surgery or something like that. But, but anyway, I figured why not I come to Washington DC. Sous chef, you sit down and kick off your shoes, relax your feet. You know Sally is here creating something to eat. <laughs> Cousin Sally here from England. I brought a lovely, lovely dish with me today. It's very simple and I know Americans, y'all just love to do everything really fast. So I thought of the fastest thing that I could possibly do for you and I brought it here with me today. So today what we're making is a delicious dish that you can find everywhere in life. You will very likely find this dish on my menu. And what this dish is called is bangers and mash. Very, very simple. Probably this is a very short video. I know sous chef likes to sit around and, and eat with you, but you know, <laughs> frankly, I don't know you like that. And I'm British, so we really don't like people like that. Like we like the people that we love, but um, it's not really my gig to sit and chat with you like that. And I'll, I'll give you a bite, I'll give you the first bite. Her, she doesn't do that for you. I'll do that for you and then I'm going to bounce out because we have other things to do. I'm here, I want to see that big white house. So. That's what I'm going to be off to as soon as this bangles and mash is finished. Do you guys like my lipstick? I think it looks fantastic. Anyway, let's get right to it. We have absolutely loads to do, you guys. Let's go. All right. Cheerio. Hello, friends. And we're back. So, like I said earlier, this recipe is absolutely simple. Absolutely fantastic. Um, I am going to show you one way that we can kick it up a notch, though, because we don't want to serve anything basic because we're not basic chicks right so traditional bangers and mash just to give you an idea um is a very simple dish that you can find both in my country and in that other country that we really don't name that country that starts with an i yes they eat this dish as well and the reason that it's called bangers is that when we first started creating this dish um the sausages would literally bang they would pop whether in the oven or on the fire, anything like that. They were literally just crack. So that's why it's called bangers. And mash is very simple, it's mashed potatoes, right? Today we are absolutely making an onion gravy. I love everything with onions in it. So we'll look through Sue Chef's kitchen and see if we can find all the materials that we need. I see her use onions a lot, so it shouldn't be too hard. And the other way that you might see it served would be rather, instead of the onion gravy, you might see it with peas like little green sweet peas anything like that not like the jamaican peas because those are actually beans i don't know why they call them peas because they're quite or not however that's not what we're here for today uh we're not here to talk about other countries we're here to talk about my country right so so jolly good so today we're gonna have some green peas we're gonna have some mash topped with bangers and that's topped with onion gravy so you know we really don't have a lot to do except we really need to get to it because, you know, it's getting dark here in Washington, D.C. And I, like I said, have many things to do. So, first things first, you want to find yourself a nice pack of sausages. If you have some at the market that you really like, and that's totally fine. However, today I will be using the Johnsonville broths. 
and I'm using it because it's got bay in it, right? Um, we're gonna make it very simple. We're gonna open up this package. We're going to put it on our griddle pan. You see those nice lines on there? It's gonna give us those nice burnt marks that we all love, right? Who wants a sausage that's not just a little bit burnt? I don't. So we're going to put it on this pan. And frankly, I've got my oven heated already at 425 degrees. We're gonna plop them in here and plop this in the oven. And in about 20 minutes, our bangers will be done. So let's get to that right now. I'm gonna pop this in the oven and we're gonna get started on our gravy. I'll be right back. Okay, that was really easy, right? Like, who knew sausages could be that simple? They are, especially if you buy them pre-packaged and pre-purposed. Okay, mates. I found myself in a little bit of a snag, okay? So, as I was rummaging through Sue Chef's kitchen, I realized that she only has one onion. And frankly, that's just not enough. I've only found one onion, but lucky for me, and perhaps lucky for you as well, she does have some shallots here. And shallots are little wonderful things. Like, really, shallots are great if you don't have enough onions and you happen to have a shallot, which, God, I don't know when that would ever happen, except for maybe in sous chef's home. However, um, typically when you're, when you're making onion gravy, you want to have two onions, like thinly sliced, like you would serve them on a hamburger. Um, shallots, as you can see, are significantly smaller. So we're gonna use both of these in place of the second onion. So right now I'm just gonna go ahead and slice these up real nice and thin, and I'll be right back and show you how to put our gravy together. All right, cheerio. Okay, and I'm back, and I just finished crying. I mean, cutting onions. That's what you guys say here in America, all right? All right, that's really funny, actually. So here we are. We've cut our, I think these are just simple. Okay, and I'm back, and I just finished crying. I mean, cutting onions. That's what you guys say here in America, all right? All right, that's really funny, actually. So here we are yellow onions and over here we have um, some shallots. So we're going to take this and as you guys know, sous chef loves her cast iron skillet and this is absolutely perfect for making a gravy. It's literally wonderful. I can't even begin to tell you. So we'll move over here and this way we're just going to turn on the fire, light it up. Here we've got three tablespoons of butter. Lay that right in the pan. And to make sure that we don't heat up our onions quite as fast, we also have one tablespoon of olive oil. And right into it, we're gonna go ahead and add our onion. It should be, I say about a total of two cups of onion, depending if you have various sizes, or you could use two large ones. Um, obviously we have our shallots in here as well. Nice thin slices, so they can begin to really break down very nicely. And let this cook down for about 10 minutes. And then we're going to begin to add our other things. All right, there. I wanted to get like a nice little over the shoulder shot of those onions, you know, cooking down. So let's carry on, you guys. Like, I'm bloody getting tired in this kitchen. So it's time to speed it up just a little bit because I'm ready to eat. And I know you're ready to eat too. I promised you that first bite, and you're absolutely going to give it. But we need to be finished. With our food, we need to be finished with our plate first. So the very next thing that we're going to do, as soon as these onions are on, you want to begin boiling your potatoes. You know, listen, and I understand that many of you are so used to eating fries because we don't want to put the name of that country in front of it. Absolutely can't stand them. I know that you guys are used to eating that country's fries with your sausages, but frankly, I don't understand why you would want to eat a fry when you could have mashed potatoes. And now I'm gonna show you my recipe for it. Let's go. I'm not really sure where they came from. They were just sitting there in the refrigerator. So we're gonna make our begin our mash. So literally, we are going to take a potato pillow or a paring knife if you've got one, whichever you've got, any kind of knife will do, and simply take the skin off of the potatoes We're just going to give these, now we've got them all shaved and hairless, it's time for us to give these a little bit of a rinse. And I know I've said something like a rinse, but actually what I've done is I've kind of taken the potato and dipped them into the boiling water that they're about to be uh, cooked in. And so now, uh, just to get a little bit of a blanch, 
So now what we're looking for is to cut our potatoes. Because if we keep them this size, it's going to take absolutely forever. So bloody long to actually cook. The big thing with mashed potatoes, you just want to make sure that your pieces that you're cutting them into are pretty much the same size. You don't want vastly different potato sizes, otherwise you're going to have vastly different cook times. So yes, we're going to take these potatoes and throw them in some boiling hot water. We've salted it with about a tablespoon of salt, so we're going to do that and I'll show you what we do to mix it all up and mash it. We'll be back in a jiffy. Alrighty, so we've got our onions. They've been hanging out for about 10 minutes in this olive oil and butter mixture. They're perfectly soft and even starting to brown a little bit, and that's exactly what we're looking for. Okay, so our next steps we want to add we have one tablespoon of sugar, add that right in, as well as one tablespoon of vinegar. I've used apple cider vinegar, it's really whatever you like. Then we're going to take about two and a half cups of beef broth and add it right on top there. We're just going to let this simmer for about five minutes. I have four teaspoons here of cold water and four teaspoons of cornstarch. So I'm just going to lightly mix these together, create a bit of a gravy, of a thickener. That's how we get gravy, right? Gravy has to be thick for it to work. Some of that broth and add it in right there. Mix it all nice together. You see that's creating like this nice thickness there. Then I'm going to take that, same thing we just mixed this together right next door, and add into the entire pot. Mix it in. So it's really going to turn it into a gravy as opposed to a broth. You can almost instantly see it begin to thicken up. Mmm. Look how nice and delicious that looks. All we want to do here is taste it, a little bit of salt and pepper, just in the way that you like it. You know me, of course I'm going to add some of sous chef's house seasoning. So I'm going to have a shake of that on top of it. And then we are finished with our onion gravy. I'm so jolly glad because I'm bloody hungry, you guys. I am bloody hungry right now. Alright mates, you missed it pretty good earlier when I was getting ready to make these potatoes. You see, we're going to take our little spider jump and we're going to... Drain our potatoes here. What you missed, you see though, however, is really special and it's exactly why we're doing it like this, is I dropped some smashed garlic down there in the bottom of the pan to really infuse some of that garlic flavour into the potatoes. So I don't want to lose that. Don't want to lose that, not one bit. So I'm scraping all the goods out. See that garlic? Looking absolutely fantastic, right? I'm just gonna add it into this pan next to me. All right, so right back in the same pan, we're just gonna add four tablespoons of butter. Okay, and one thing that's really important that I know, I've seen a lot of Americans really make this mistake, is that when they're making the mashed potatoes, they add cold milk and butter. Now I understand how your potatoes are supposed to stay warm and hot, nice piping hot, if you're adding cold milk and cold butter. So this is what we're doing here. We're taking our butter, four tablespoons, back into the same pan we made of potatoes. And we're going to add two cups of milk as well. I'm going to get this on a medium high heat. One tablespoon of salt. Half a tablespoon crushed black pepper. I'm going to add just a couple of shakes of garlic powder. About half a tablespoon. About a tablespoon of chopped onion. Last but not least, certainly we've got to place some parsley in there. And as you see, we've created this really great, beautiful, aromatic, warm milk mixture to ensure that our potatoes stay nice and warm. There may be quite a few things that you might be surprised that sous chef does not have in a kitchen. Probably the most prominent is probably simply a potato masher. But she does have a whisk. These potatoes are absolutely perfect for mashing just like this. Now, we have our milk mixture that we've created, right? So we're just going to slowly incorporate this, bit by bit.
I am absolutely famished. Like, it's absolutely insane, actually, how hungry I am right now. And such a simple meal, right? We're making sausages, mashed potatoes, and a little bit of onion gravy as well, some peas. However, I am starving. I'm so bloody hungry. And I know I said that I would give you the first bite, and I just want to make sure I keep my word of that. Because that's what we do. Those of us who are from England, we keep our word, absolutely. So, just going to give you a little bit of a close-up here. Show you what we've created today, sous chefs. I did the peas off camera because, by golly, if you can't make peas and you have absolutely no business in the kitchen, if I'm absolutely honest, if you cannot make peas without being led by Sally, sous chef's cousin or sous chef herself, then... You need to start from the beginning, but catch a look at this. Beautiful green peas, delicious mashed potatoes, onion gravy, absolutely just sopping, absolutely dripping off of everything. Two thick sausages, lots of meat, lots of carbs, lots of taste. So let's get to it. Let's get you a bite of this. Sausages, absolutely piping hot, absolutely overflowing overwhelming with flavor and then shall i get you a bite absolutely dripping with onions ready take a bite oh now it's my turn because i'm like i said absolutely famished i'm supposed to sing sing chef song here so let me do that that's her one request as i sing a song for her five six five six Seven, eight, kick off your shoes, it's a sous chef beat. Gather around, cause it's time to eat. We cooked it, we cooked it, we did that. Now, you guys, it's been so real. I know sous chef, she is so excited to get back to you. Other, send your wishes, send your love. Get ready, her birthday is coming up this Saturday, October 26th, she'll be turning 31, so please feel free to send her lots of love. Her cash app is QSU2, alright, so send her lots of birthday love, and we're so excited, so excited to be here and help her just with her channel for just for today. Maybe next time I'm back in town, maybe in a year or two, I'll see you guys again and be able to cook with you again, but, you know, the one thing, the great thing about being a sous chef like you all are, is that sous chef comes on here, and today I came on here, my name is Sally, came on here to teach you how to make something, and from now on, you can absolutely make it yourself. Thanks, you guys. Cheerio. Mm. So good. So good. Bloody good.